This is Uganda, a beautiful country with tremendous potential whose resilient people continue to recover from the political chaos that followed independence. Mbarara University of Science and Technology, also known as MAST, was founded in 1989 with Faculty of Medicine offering undergraduate programs in medicine and surgery. By 2001, it had also opened a Faculty of Science and a Faculty of Development Studies. Our mission is to create the highly skilled workforce that is essential for our country's sustained economic growth and development. We train doctors to heal the sick and maintain a healthy population. We teach the next generation of Ugandan scientists. We train young people who will manage the development of agriculture and industries for the years to come. Together, we are working toward a brighter future for the people of Uganda. Succeed, we must. The health of Ugandans is critical. It is only those who are healthy who can actively and productively participate in the economy of the land. The healthcare needs are enormous. There are problems linked to poverty. There are problems linked to access of information. Things like child mortality rates, maternal mortality rates, things like HIV. There is diphtheria, malaria, TB. If five children were born, at least one or two would die before the age of five, and they die because of preventable diseases. Before Marine Invest was started, the doctor-patient ratio in Uganda was one to around 50,000. And when Barrier University started, it reduced to around one in 25,000. So we hope that it can really come down to at least one in 500. The mission of the medical faculty is to train health care professionals who are prepared to work in different environments, both rural and urban areas. The undergraduate degrees we offer are for medical doctors, nurses, pharmacists, and laboratory scientists. I want to be a gynecologist and obstetrician. It feels so sad when a mother has to lose her baby and she has to maybe lose her uterus just because she couldn't find a doctor in the villages to help her out. People out there are really suffering. I would like to look after AIDS because I lost one of my parents for AIDS and my mom is still living but still she's suffering from AIDS. I love looking after patients, I love to help them get better. And another thing I grew to love was to teach, to teach other people how to take care of these patients. All the lecturers, they are inspiring. They really want to make you the best or even something better than they are. They are fun in classes and they make some jokes and you really understand they allow questions if you have not understood and they are even easy people to approach. The more people I train, the better services they will offer for the people in the countryside where they will be able to work. These wires are called highlight wires. Most of the people we see in the hospital are rural-based people. Majority of them are poor people and they have got to travel long distances to reach here. The Mbarara Regional Referral Hospital is sponsored by the Ministry of Health. We give services for general medicine, surgery, HIV AIDS and other infectious diseases, dental health and all the other specialities of a major referral hospital. Normally on a ward round, we review the patient, we discuss what's happening with the patient and we use that chance to teach, to help the young doctors think through the process of taking care of the patients, the management especially. Some, I can feel it, I can feel it underneath you. But I would grade that as one out of four. International partners are essential in providing the human resources necessary to train the next generation of scientists and health providers. Since 1989, Cuba is uh, supporting this university with a professor not only specifically in medicine, they send some pharmacologists and another kind of professor. This, our, this patient, this patient. our main problem now is maternal mortality. 
We are dreaming to reduce maternal mortality, to reduce infant mortality. Only improving the, the community, the, the primary care, will be possible to solve the problem. And then the pregnancy will be safe to the mother here in Uganda. This is our dream. We have a colleague who is a medical missionary through the Baptist Mission of Uganda. He suggested that we start an HIV AIDS clinic. We began in 1998 in November with one patient. And since that time has grown from one to over 8,000 patients now. And a lot of that is basic care for opportunistic infections. About a third of those patients are on antiretroviral drugs. Those who are severely immunosuppressed with CD4 counts less of than 200, we put on the waiting list. Those who are in their late stage of disease, we put on that waiting list. I have been on antiretroviral drugs uh, since 2003. Since then, I'm now strong, and my CD4 has risen from 200 to 580. Currently, we have 1,500 patients on that waiting list, and if you're first on that list, you get your drugs. All our collaborators provide essential support for the mission of the university. A growing relationship with American organization Doctors for Global Health has sent medical residents at Montefiore Hospital in New York to assist with training medical students on the wards. So that's a good observation, physical observation that you made. The university has worked a lot with PET, the Tropical Health Education Trust, a British NGO. We looked at that, so we've worked out she's got a raised ESR. And a they've also sent faculty. We have currently two, and they've been helping in responsibilities of teaching, clinical care, running of outpatient clinics and also teaching postgraduates in form of tutorials. And the definition of infarction really that initiated the postgraduate training program. And this was in view of building capacity of the local Ugandans to become lecturers. And currently in 2005 we are six lecturers in the Department of Internal Medicine. MAS offers more than 15 masters and PhD programs in several fields, including obstetrics and gynecology, biochemistry, ophthalmology, surgery, and public health. The courses of the Masters of Public Health are offered by Lund University of Sweden, and the courses are offered online here in this learning center. And uh, like you see in my background, it has modern computers. It is connected to fast-speed internet. Masters of Public Health here is very relevant and important. I'm mainly interested in community empowerment. And Bara University implements a community-based health program. That is, the doctors are trained to tackle the problems of the people from where they are. Community health is the core of the program. For a third world country like Uganda, over 80% of the population is rural. So medical personnel have to be encouraged to work in the rural settings. Students need to be prepared to go the extra mile, use minimal resources, give key clear messages to the community so that health and health care can improve. That's why students have to spend part of their training in the rural areas. While in my fourth year of education, I was placed in a health center for, we spent six weeks there, mainly doing community visits and health outreaches. And that is really very important. It makes you appreciate the health problems at the grassroots. It's part of the inspiration we have to continue working with upcountry settings. What's really exciting to me is that we are training not just doctors, but nurses, I mean, a, a whole different cadre of healthcare workers. And those healthcare workers are not staying here, they're going throughout Uganda. And so we've got doctors that we've trained that are excellent doctors that are now out teaching others in other parts of the country. In Ibanda Hospital, I'm the main teacher for community health. So we go to the nearby communities to make practical what we teach. It's exciting because we speak to the whole community. We do health education about how to prevent illnesses like malaria, like HIV, many communicable diseases. And also we instill in them more health-seeking behaviors like attending antenatal care, uh, like bringing their children for immunization, and like also having their deliveries in hospital or at least health centers. 
The medical faculty is not just an academic training institution. We are also working every day for the immediate care of local people all over Mbarara district. Today is a child health day for this particular area, which is planned together with the Ministry of Health to ensure that most of the children get immunization services, deworming, and they are way to ensure that they are growing well. One goal of the university is to empower communities to manage their own problems. The Child Health Project trains community volunteers to manage simple illnesses and refer complicated ones. We share knowledge and uh, when you visit their homes, you notice a change. At least if there is food in the house, it's covered, the bushes are cleared to reduce the malaria, there is a drying rack, at least people are more informed than they were before. The project is possible because of the Canadian involvement. They have expertise in pediatric problems and because of the funding from Canada. According to the statistics we have, children who have been referred for treatment, children who have been helped by the volunteers, children who have been immunized because of our influence are more than 90,000. <laughs> the Faculty of Medicine has many vital collaborations with local, national and international organizations. For example, Mobile Hospice Mbarara provides hospice care to rural patients with terminal diseases such as AIDS and cancer. These patients have already been to all hospitals, they have been to all herbalists, they have been to everywhere and they are at the end of their life and they are in a lot of pain. They come to hospice or we visit them in their homes, we cancel them, give them drugs for pain, relieve their symptoms like the smelling wounds. Mobile Hospice in Barara, we teach the medical students and the nursing, the postgraduate and the undergraduate, we teach them palliative care. It is a way of spreading the palliative care to other people because when they finish, they go to other hospitals and they are going to meet this kind of patients we are talking about. The university collaborates closely with many other organizations, including the Family Planning Association of Uganda, the Mulago Mbarara Joint AIDS Project, Doctors Without Borders, the University of California, the AIDS Support Organization, Joint Clinical Research Center, and Center for Disease Control in Uganda. As it struggles to grow, the university faces tremendous financial challenges. There is not enough money in the budget for basic maintenance or to develop infrastructure. The usual nurse to patient ratio that we have is about 20 patients to one nurse. In my clinic in the dental department, the equipment are all now beyond the age of 20 years and because they are being overused, they are all running down. There's so much that would help, even just drugs for treating just the common infections. People will end up dying uh, because of lack of medical facilities, no medicine, no equipment, no what. But the university has great ambitions to grow and be able to produce more highly skilled graduates. It is being planned that this learning center, which is funded by the Swedish International Cooperation Agency, also becomes a learning center that transmits education to other places of the region. The technology is very expensive and needs more, more support. I want to see Mbarara University, the state-of-the-art research center, but I know this is a big dream because we need, we need funds to carry out really good research and we only can manage this through international collaborations. We need the help in collaboration and we need these uh, uh, specialists in all the fields. There are plans that have been drawn up and have been approved to probably double or triple the size of this hospital. But even when you build the building, there's still the need to equip it. And so one of the areas that I see is that collaborators could come in and do that. 
this government granted land will one day be the site of the new university campus. Our dream is to expand the Faculty of Medicine and move everybody else to the new campus. But we now look forward to those with the funds to help us to start on the development of this campus. We believe that with more researchers, more intellectuals training us, we shall be able to grow into a big and competitive university. There's a phrase that we use in, in the local language here uh, called Mpora Mpora, which means slowly, slowly. And it just means that with time, things will happen. The motto of must is succeed we must. Under whatever conditions, we must succeed. I will succeed, and it is a must. I must succeed, and after five years, I must leave this place as a doctor. Our university, Mbaro University of Science and Technology, is moving in the right direction. We need support to continue this. Together, we will succeed. The people of Uganda are counting on us. Succeed, we must.